This is a story of Allied cooperation. It's a story of how the United States Army and New Zealand motor industry got together and transformed the supply of combat vehicles in the South Pacific. These trucks are the casualties of tropical service. From the Solomons and other island bases, they've been shipped down here to New Zealand to be reconditioned for tropical service once more. This project, undertaken by motor assembly plants in New Zealand, means that disabled vehicles are reclaimed with an effective distance of the operational area. New Zealand is 4,000 miles nearer the Solomons than the United States. In terms of shipping and automotive supply, that's a tremendous saving. These parking areas on the shores of the Wellington Harbour act as the clearing station for all the trucks, jeeps, ambulances and weapon carriers received from the forward areas. They are strategically placed for feeding out disabled vehicles to New Zealand's three major motor assembly plants, all within a three mile radius. At the Ford plant, they deal with quarter ton jeeps. Here the body is removed from the chassis and the whole vehicle completely knocked down to its original parts. Getting rid of coral sand and tropical rust calls for more than ordinary cleaning. Caustic and steam are particularly effective. To replace corroded portions, specially designed panels are welded into the original body. When every single part has been cleaned right down to the last cotter pin, reassembly begins. Engine reconditioning is a routine part of this work. Every engine is completely broken down and worn parts replaced. When reassembled, the standard of performance must be equivalent to new. In this, as in every other part of the job, the work is carried out by New Zealand technicians. In spite of total mobilization and other war plant commitments, the New Zealand government placed a high priority on this project and drafted manpower for the work. All electrical fittings are subjected to rigorous tests before reinstallation. In the spraying booths, all parts are sprayed three times, first with a rust inhibiting primer and then with two coats of a dull synthetic enamel. On the trim line, body hardware and fittings are installed. Many of these fittings are supplied by smaller factories elsewhere in New Zealand. This coordinated work fits into the whole scheme of vehicle reclamation. From the trim assembly, the bodies are rolled to the main assembly. For the second time in its life, this chassis goes on the assembly line. This job of reassembly is a repetition of the assembly routine for new vehicles. In effect, these are new vehicles, for this is a complete rebuilding from the chassis frame up. Every portion of the chassis, engine and body has been reconstructed and rebuilt. Inspection by Ford technical experts and U.S. Army inspectors follows assembly. Even with high-class workmanship, no risks can be taken. After exhaustive inspections, these vehicles are ready for all the hazards of combat service. General Motors plant, two and a half ton trucks are rebuilt. Here the procedure is the same. All vehicles are stripped and thoroughly cleaned before reconditioning commences. With trucks, considerable woodwork is involved. Here damaged sections of the body are being removed. In rebuilding truck bodies, New Zealand timber is used for replacements. When finished, these bodies are truly an Americo-New Zealand production. Music 
engines are replaced after a thorough stripping. Cylinder blocks have been cleaned by total immersion in cleaning fluid, and every part of the engine is as good as new. Here, too, is a rigid inspection by Army Ordnance Inspectors. At the plant of Todd Motors Limited, three-quarter ton weapon carriers are subjected to the same reconditioning as the Jeeps and two and a half ton trucks. This firm is another New Zealand one. In peacetime, it assembles Chrysler products. Here too, the emphasis is on the same high standard of workmanship and the reconditioned carriers match up to new. Before being handed over to the automotive reclamation section, all vehicles are road tested. Any adjustments necessary for sweeter running are made on the spot. Wellington's Hill Roads, a short distance from the assembly plants, make ideal testing tracks. With all tests completed, a convoy of trucks head along the highway on the first stage of their journey back to the forward areas. At the Ordnance Reclamation Headquarters, jeeps are nested in the trucks. This practice of loading jeeps onto the two-and-a-half-ton trucks is an effective method of saving shipping space. At the wharf, the rebuilt vehicles are lined up for shipment. Saved from the rust and jungle growth of the tropical islands, these are now A1 trucks and jeeps, fit and ready for army service. In the 16 months of its operation, this reclamation project has reconditioned nearly 3,000 of these greatly needed vehicles. So successful has this project been that the South Pacific Base Command has been able to cancel the shipment of normal automotive replacements. This meant savings in shipping, and in addition, the South Pacific was able to re-equip combat divisions, as well as supplying vehicles to other commands. This reclamation project is another example of successful allied cooperation. New Zealand industry and New Zealand workmen have achieved results of which they are justly proud. The automotive reclamation section organized and put into operation a scheme which paid handsome dividends in the Pacific War. Vehicle reclamation in New Zealand is a triumph all round.